<laughs> we'll move on to the skills challenge. Skills challenge, dare I say, was the best part of NBA All Star Weekend. <laughs> I don't hate it. I right. don't. Well, let's let's run through it. So it had a, a bunch of different challenges. They had the team kind of course or whatever. So you had the number one picks versus the Pacers versus the, the All Stars. Is that what it was? A- Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Uh, he he stayed true to his word, kind of, uh, where he said he was going to shoot with his left hand only in the All Star game. Turns out he he started doing it in the skills challenge right off the rip uh, with the three three point shots. You have to make one. So and gross. All, so two gross. of them hit the backboard, and I don't know where the th- I don't think they showed the third one on camera because I haven't seen it yet, and I haven't seen the replay yet. <laughs> uh, so that was fun, Anthony Edwards. Good for you. That the course was fine. I I liked the course setup. I liked what they had to do. However, do we not have better basketball players to do this? Because it seems like uh, do, none of them knew what to do. No one knew where to go. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey did it. Scotty Barnes no. did it. And I think Anthony Edwards did. Like every single player just missed the turn, like to run around the the little obstacles or whatever. They all missed it. I don't know. I thought yeah, it was fine. I, I, but the uh, the viral thing that was going around was Anthony Edwards shooting with his left hand. Yeah, and Scotty Barnes just being an absolute personality of all personalities. I don't like this. This it's almost like a bot mindset. If you look at the Instagram comments, everybody's like, "Oh, he's not beating the no. allegations." No, he has a personality, and he might be a little silly yeah. and dare I say dumb. But we love people like that. Every time, like we've even talked about it on this show, we're like, "Oh, like people don't necessarily have personalities in certain leagues yeah. or on certain teams." You know, there's no aura. When I see Scotty Barnes, it might not be a "Oh, this guy's one of the best players in the world" kind of aura. Mm-hmm. But it's like, a, oh, I want to chill with that guy kind of aura. And I'll take anything at this point. That A lot of sports leagues have a swag problem. And I think Scotty Barnes is just – he's like he's like, your, he's like your friend in school that, you know, sits might sit at a different lunch table than you, might be in different classes than you. But – and I don't mean it like that. Let me let me clear let me clear it out. I more, I more so mean it like, oh, he's the guy you see after school and, you know, y'all are on some chill shit. But every time y'all see each other, it's just all the time. Nope. And I feel like every time I see Scotty Barnes, a part of me, res- I, uh, he resonates with me in a, in a different way that a lot of different, a lot of players I can't even really think of. But that, that was the, I love uh, him. I the love most him. Bill Simmons simile in comparison that you could have ever done in your entire life because I didn't know where you were going and I don't know if you landed the plane and it made perfect sense to me. <laughs> That's the most Bill Simmons way of um, possible. Uh, Scotty Barnes, though, exactly. very funny. He lost a dribble on the skills challenge, ran around the wrong way, then lost a dribble and then did it again. Very funny. Then they ended up doing half court shots as the second part of it, which I, is that part of a skills challenge? I think that's more of like a trick shot kind of thing, but whatever. He turns yeah. around midway and just shoots one backwards, one handed, just right over the shoulder, nowhere near the basket. Funniest, funniest video I have of all time. And then um, the passing challenge, he just chunks one. Like he's Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, just throwing it as hard as he can down the middle of the field. It goes in the passing net or whatever, and then he tries to take off, and it's like a, a Scooby-Doo or a cartoon kind of thing where the, the wheel starts spinning, and he slips, and he falls. It, it was just a yeah, straight, straight out of the Flintstones. All-time meme worthy moments from Scotty Barnes. And I appreciate him because he he made me enjoy the skills challenge. Exactly. He saved it. I feel like he saved it. Wemby 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 played like yeah. shit. Anthony Edwards was playing with his left. I the, the, these guys that the I you asked earlier do do players, you know, do, are we going to find better players for this? These are some of the best players in the world and if they're not even trying and they're making themselves look stupid, I mean, what can save this at this point? And sure, the all, the the skills challenge was great, especially at the end. I kind of, you know, was feeling the yeah. aura at the end. But but you're getting the best players in the world, and only two of them care. And the same thing can be said about the All Star game. But it also kind of looks different because when you see Cat getting the ball up and down, or Dame getting the ball up and down, or even Tyrese in the first half, you're just like, okay, dude, it's an All Star game, chill yeah. out. But then everyone on Twitter is like, oh, why didn't they try? Why didn't they try? So you can't win in these situations. But it begs the, it begs the question. I mean, I, what, what would you do to fix the All-Star game? Um, nothing. You can't. It, you just won't. It, like Larry Bird was talking about it because he was in Indiana, and, which is very funny that he only goes to Pacers things now and not Celtic things. So it might be a 
telltale sign of your organization's health, but whatever, it's fine. If your stars aren't coming back home, neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was talking about, he's like, we need to get some more juice. We need to find some incentives. We need to, it's not going to happen. Anthony Edwards said it and his, I don't know if it was pregame, postgame, sometime during the media of all-star weekend, he said, no, this is a, this is a vacation. This is a break from the competition. This is, a time to relax and ease into it. Like if you look at every other player, that's not at all-star weekend, they all went on vacations. They either went skiing or like somewhere warm, tropical, whatever. They went somewhere else to enjoy their time off from a a break from the competition, a time to be with their families, be with their friends, whatever. For the people that go to all-star weekend is now an, it's like a forced obligation. You don't get to have that vacation anymore. You don't get to just have fun with your friends and family or whoever. You get you don't get to take that mental break because you have to go play basketball. And Anthony Edwards situation, like he had two different events. He had the skills challenge and the actual all star game. Like some people just Yeah, he was he was busy. Yeah, it's not like he just got to take a full on break. He just he had to do stuff. So I, I get it. Um I feel for him like NHL players, they acted the same way, which I thought the NHL All Star game was pretty good. It was it happened a few weeks ago now. Um I thought it was a fun time because it's very similar to the NBA All Star game. They don't want to get hurt, so they don't try very hard. They don't put up too much of a fight, but they'll play defense here and there whenever they want to. The goalies are obviously trying because they don't want to get scored on. But other than that, of course, I thought it was a a good NHL All-Star game, but uh, you had the same thing. Like during the NHL All-Star team draft, like they had four separate teams, so it took forever. And it was, they had celebrities as their captains. It was just an awful experience, the whole thing. They got down to the nitty gritty with like three or four players left. One guy got drafted and it looked like someone had just like taken his family hostage and shot them because he had no <laughs> desire to be there. Like he was a, a late addition to the all-star team. Like I'm sure he already oh. had the Cabo vacation booked, paid for all of that. And then they gave him a call like, hey, man, you're going to have to go to Toronto, Canada to go play in oh, the all-star brother. game. So you're going to have to miss that. I, I found it really interesting. It. it if you notice, the the team all stars was just all the reserves that just got called up at the last second for the skills challenge. I I kind of felt bad for them because they didn't have to be there until they just got that call, like you said. And sure, we got some decent moments with the skills challenge. I they I feel like they change it up every year, and the LED court just kind of threw me off too. I was kind of I don't want to say I was I don't want to say I was waiting for somebody to fall, but we the results are the results. Yeah. They 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 speak for themselves and. Sure, we got great moments with Scotty Barnes, Anthony Edwards doing the left, which was hilariously Very silly funny. and utterly pointless. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really trying to find the bright spots with this All Star Weekend, and there was a couple in the Skills Challenge. I, I I'm trying to really, really dig deep though. Uh, there's a couple moments, especially we'll get to the three point challenge. Uh, they don't make them like Jason Capono, man. <laughs> I, Genuinely, that was the one of the first All Star weekends I ever watched when he went back to back oh seven oh eight. The, uh, the and, Darren uh, Williams Chris Paul discourse that could have happened online if we had ever had Twitter back then. Oh, oh man, it was it, it was up there. I remember I, you you would even see, and this was like peak talking head talk radio, you know, local shit, national shit. Uh, the the Chris Paul Darren Williams man, they were neck and neck for a solid two three years. It there was it was a, it was Saw, a real thing, dude. dude. Oh, yeah, that was so fun, man. man. I, I'm, yeah, I missed that a lot. Um, go ahead and go with the three point yeah. challenge here, because I'm really trying to find the, 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 the great things we can talk about. And I don't want to talk about Damian Lillard winning his bullshit fake accolades no. for no, no, no. you know. We won't, however, we won't mention him at all. Actually, um, perfect. Did you, <laughs> did you see the meme from Seinfeld? And it's Jerry. He opens the door, and it's Kramer, and it's completely greened out like it's it's neon and green and <laughs> jerry goes kramer what's going on in there and kramer goes jerry it's the nba three-point contest <laughs> and it's just all neon <laughs> green because it was the mountain dew three-point contest i guess and the whole floor was just yeah. neon green the whole time very hurtful on the God. eyes i'm glad i only had my laptop open on this one like it's if this was on the tv throughout the night like just blaring through my bedroom, I probably would have been just blind the next morning. It's just neon green court, uh, which I thought was funny. And the memes were funny, whatever. But the three point contest was decent. Like the three point contest is good most years just because it's the only thing that is kind of like an actual competition where people. Drive. Yeah, you can't mess it up. Well, it's, you're shooting. Um, I, yeah. I do want to say something about the uh, TNT broadcast team and everyone else involved with it. 
Um, they mentioned that Carl Anthony Towns is the only big man to ever win the three-point contest. How soon do we forget the legend, the greatest European basketball player of all time, Dirk Nowitzki, winning the three-point <laughs> contest in 2006, the year that he first Oh, first. man. I don't, I don't know how we forget that. I don't know how we forget the greatest big man scorer of all time. I, I, like, uh, shooter, I will say, not scorer. I mean, sure, Kareem sure. Is, obviously that guy because he scored the most points before LeBron did, but yep, Dirk, that's, Dirk yeah. won a three point contest in 2006. And just, we're not going to acknowledge that. I also want to ban big men from the three point contest is what I've decided. You think, you think Anyone it's a, like, some kind of advantage that they have? It's just What's like, the... they look awkward grabbing the ball from the rack and I just can't wrap my head around it. And that's the only reason. No other reason at all. Me, it's me. just, it, 